I love it. And it's also like just the way that you have these kind of very broad themes are searching through it. And then there's like the characters that fl I think a great example of this is it's there's this meta thing of there's the simultaneous disproportionate decline. This is one of my favorite ideas in the whole book. It's that in the late 2020s in this world, there's all these climate shocks and kind of the world economy just goes completely haywire. There's not there's a global depression which means the US goes into a depression. It's very inward. There's a lot of civil unrest, political unrest, and it's bad in the US, but it's catastrophic everywhere else. So if you're in the rest of the world, it's a complete societal collapse on par with the Bronze Age collapse. It's like a 500 year reset. In the US, it's like a bad five years. So you then when the, when the rest of the, when the US kind of comes out of it, the rest of the world's collapsed to the point that it's even hard to talk to each other. And you have a character, Nicole. One red plugged. Did yeah, yeah. Plugged? yeah, 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 plugged. Yeah, no, that was sick. Yeah, you're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> All five of them. No, they had, like these. There's actually like a, a, a history of the world yeah. as the backstory but for it. The idea for plugged was what if Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book about the beam, which like, came out was, perfectly. But, but before Sean tells this story, I just want to do the thing I do where I frame it for people who have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, please um, do. So the beam consists, it's going to consist of five seasons. Uh, we have four written and four is just in the can. It's got to be edited. It's so three are available right now. But but the way it was actually written was we wrote season one. Then we wrote um, the book called Plugged, which is fiction as nonfiction in the world of the beam. So it's a writer living in 2097 telling that story. Then we wrote season two. Mm. Then we started a series called The Future of Sex, which is in the world of the beam, but set in 2060 when the beam is just coming online. And it's <laughs> sort of the story of like a chosen one. And um, then we wrote season three, then we finished Future of Sex, and all the while we're writing little side projects that were like, you know, that, that could be beamish. And we'll tie that in, and then that becomes lore that, like, we have Even a whole retired property. Yeah, right, the and then we're beholden to it. We're like, it. we're like, well, this guy, he was actually from, like, 19, you know, 2018 doing something with his company and a whole separate series that has nothing to do with the beam. So we're always doing that. But but yeah, so Sean, I just wanted to give that before you told about Plugged. Yeah, Plugged was just, uh, um, it, I think we wrote Plugged more for us than anybody. I mean, we certainly would always love it if something takes off, but that's never been our primary driver. And actually at this more mature point in our career, we realized it never will be. Like we're just wanting to kind of write the things that we want to write. And, and I think that that we have a couple of things to finish up. The Beam is one of them. But we're on, like, the apex of a brand new kind of way of telling stories because all these boxes will be closed and we'll be on. And we mm -hmm. kind of know who we are as storytellers and as a partnership and are really ready to do crazy things with that. But even from the beginning, it was about what can we – what how can we excite ourselves? And so – Plug was never something that we imagined would sell a shit ton of copies because you kind of have to be a super fan of the beam to to, to even care. And how do you even market it? Because our names aren't on it. It's a <laughs> fake author. The guy's name is Sterling Gibson. Right? Who appears later in the beam, by the way. <laughs> um, so we, 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 we wrote that book. It's a fake nonfiction book called Plug, How Hyperconnectivity and the Beam Changed the Way We Think. And... Um, it's it, it again. Johnny adopts kind of a Malcolm Gladwell voice, and there's all these stories. Like uh, my favorite one, uh, or the one I remember most fondly, I guess, is the is Mama Beatrice, where she's you know she turns on her doodad after the world has collapsed, and she tells this story about how um, disaffected they were. They're all just disassociated because they're seeing these atrocities around the world, but um, you know, looking at it on the phone made it easy to not care. And what's amazing is that this was written in 2013, I think. And so much, like, it feels a little more prophetic now. And that's that's kind of cool to, to see how some of that Cool and depressing. Out. I was depressing. writing this dystopian thing. And you're like, what, this is <laughs> Coolest real now? storytellers. Coolest storytellers. I also wrote but, a pandemic book and then got to continue it after COVID, which is great. <laughs> you're the whole time, you're like, too real. Yes. Yeah, 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 that sucked. <laughs> so Plug was written... In between one and two, because there was a lot about the world that we could start to understand then. You know, um, like Johnny did all the calculations for the lattice. Like those yeah, are, that that's all real favorite. math. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. no way. That yeah, is no, no, hardcore. No. I'll divert on that. So the yeah, story yeah, please. is, so that the, 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 um, the, the what, what you were, what Colin was talking about, about the, 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 the you know, the 
the rest of the world and, and the NAU, which is the North, North American Union. So it's basically the US, Canada and Mexico got together and said, fuck all y'all. And because the um, the Wild East, which is the rest of the world, doesn't matter if they're <laughs> South or like Wild East, that's America for you. Very American. Not us, it's yeah, the exactly. Wild East. And so um, we had to put up what we call is called the Continental Lattice, which is a nanobot supported network that will deflect missiles and that sort of thing if they ever decide to come after us because we've got everything and they've got nothing. And the Lattice, like we, one of the things that our Malcolm Gladwell character, who's called Sterling Gibson, does is he interviews people, you know, about everything throughout the history of the beam. And he talks about to somebody about the lattice. And so it just got, I just had a wild hair. Now you got to realize this is like in a movie when you see some really expensive shot and it's, yep. it's two seconds of the film and you're like, man, they did all that for two seconds. It's the same thing. So like there's, you know, I could have just skipped over the lattice is X and it would have been fine. But I was like, I wonder, I wonder if I can make a point here. And so I calculated the weight of like what a sheet of tin foil, which is what I figured was about what the lattice would be like as far as bulk, what that would, how big that would be, like what the square, what the area would be, how much it would weigh, that sort of thing. And it was driven by these little nanobots that are basically just farting air out their back end to, to, to you know, hold it up. Um, but that was all real math. I, I do that sort of thing all the time. But, but I also think that, that that's that's an that that's a really that's a really great example of what what makes it so unique is, is that kind of there's this one idea of these like I think it's like like hoverbots or nanobots or something and you just have this this individual invention of like hey we're gonna have something that can lift maybe it's five times its weight or ten times its weight or whatever it is and but it's very very small and then that ripples through the whole series not only is that leading to like a continental defense grid it's also leading to like covering couches. And it, it's literally <laughs> infuses ottoman. everything. Yeah, the first thing was a floating ottoman, and 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 people were like, "What a frivolous, dumb invention to just like you can be, put your foot up and it can float rather than sitting on little casters." But the thing is that what the nanobots let us do, and and this is again, this is all coming in the story. Mm -hmm. We don't know this in advance. L literally, this happens as I'm typing. Is the nanobots? The thing that people don't get about nanobots is they're not really just little robots. Like they're mm -hmm. they're mechanically too small to have more than a handful of parts. Like you, you, the atoms are too big, right? Like when you get down to that scale. So when people imagine nanobots as being these like super intelligent little things that can like do processing, like, no, mm -hmm. that's no, there's just not enough stuff there. So mm -hmm. unless you're in some sort of weird quantum system where they're multidimensional, which we weren't gonna do, we have ours working in a network. So if you have a bunch of, of nanobots that are, that gain enough intelligence to know where you want your ottoman, you know, that level of intelligence, they are getting that because they're in a network. So it's like the human brain with a bunch of individual cells. That's the analogy is that the nanobots are intelligent because they network. And that has a ton of ramifications too. They're like I'm entrepreneurs sure you know. in that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not always smart in our cells, but if we combine. Right. And through the chaos, maybe there's like one or two little good micro ideas that come out of like the 15 <laughs> things 